Hello everyone, in this video we will finish the discussion about my master's thesis. In this video we will look at the electroweak phase transition where the Higgs field becomes massive. We have discussed production of dark matter and possibilities of detecting it. There is however also another way to see inside and that is at high energies. High energy means high temperatures corresponding to the early universe. Today the universe is cold and the average temperature is around 2.7 Kelvin. But according to the Big Bang Theory, the universe was a very dense and billions of billions of degrees hot in the very early universe before cooling down. This is where high energy physics meets cosmology. We can reproduce many of the conditions of such a hot and dense universe in particle accelerators and study the physics at these high energies. In this video we will look at how our extension to the standard model holds up at these very high energies. So keep on watching. As mentioned in the previous video, there are several problems with the standard model and some of these issues are related to the Higgs sector. In particular, the electric phase transition is a bit of a weakness. So what is this phase transition? As the name suggests, it has to do with the combined electric force, which exists at temperatures or energies beyond 160 GeV according to the standard model. At this energy, the electromagnetic and weak force are united, thus at this energy, the electroweak symmetry breaking has not taken place. This means that the Higgs field is at its origin, and thus the Higgs particle does not give mass to particles, and all the fundamental particles are thus massless. The electric phase transition is the transition from this combined electric force to the two separate electromagnetic and weak force via symmetry breaking. As we have mentioned in previous videos, the Higgs potential plays a key role in the symmetry breaking. Thus the fact that we have modified the Higgs sector of the model by modifying the potential and added an additional Higgs particle means that the electric phase transition may also be different. This is what we will discuss more. So what is the problem with the standard model? Well here we have to ask a deeper question. How did we get the matter in the first place? The problem is that matter and antimatter is produced equally as far as we know, but something isn't adding up. If matter and antimatter is completely equal, then you should just annihilate after production, leaving nothing but energy. To build atoms, we obviously need particles like quarks and electrons, so this scenario is no good. We need that some matter survives this particle bloodbath, on other words, we need some baryon asymmetry. And the conditions for this are called the Sakharov conditions. Condition 1 is that baryon number is violated. Condition 2 is C symmetry and CP symmetry violation. And condition 3 is the interaction out of thermal equilibrium. If we can satisfy these conditions, it is possible to have a mechanism for baryogenesis, or in other words, a way to produce a surplus of matter. This surplus is actually very small, because the photo to baryon ratio suggests that a lot of matter was formed initially, but only a tiny fraction survived. But the standard model alone cannot account for this tiny fraction, so we must do something. So we can consider if our dark matter model with a modified Higgs sector could possibly resolve this question. If we consider baryon number, C symmetry and CP symmetry violation, then we see that the standard model actually satisfies these conditions. While the standard model doesn't have any terms in the Lagrangian that explicitly breaks baryon number conservation, there is actually baryon number violation built into the standard model. During the electroweak phase, before the electroweak phase transition, it is possible to violate baryon number conservation. The issue is that any baryon asymmetry formed or any excess matter produced is just wiped out by this phase transition. Another problem is that CP violation is too small to produce enough asymmetry. The conclusion is thus that somehow increasing 
the CP violation would be a good idea. More critically, the phase transition in the standard model is horrible as it kills any asymmetry. This can however be fixed if we had a different phase transition allowing for out of equilibrium interactions. If we somehow can shut off this asymmetry killing mechanism via a first order phase transition instead of the smooth crossover transition in the standard model. Having a deeper understanding of the problem now, it is time to explore how this phase transition looks for our modified model. Can we save the universe? If you take the recipe book for fixing this issue, you would find ingredients like add more bosons, add more Higgs fields, and obtain a first order electric phase transition. Well, this model extension adds more bosons in form of a dark matter candidate and also another Higgs field. So the question is then, is the transition first order? To figure this out, it is necessary to compute higher order corrections of the effective potential, including temperature corrections. Computing all the different terms gives us an equation which includes temperature dependence of the potential. Recall that temperature and energy are related, so high energies correspond to high temperatures. If we look at the shape of the potential at high temperatures, we find that the potential looks exactly like the standard model potential at high temperatures. But that was kind of expected, and that part was already fine. The important part is how the transition to lower temperatures is. Allowing for the temperature to fall, we eventually get to the critical temperature where the minimum at the origin is at the same energy as the minimum away from the origin. Recall that for the standard model, we saw a flat pass for the Higgs field to transition from the origin to the new minimum away from the origin. In the case of this new model, we have this potential barrier between the two minima. This is the key that gives us a first order phase transition, just like we wished for. This means that the Higgs field will be stuck for some time in this false vacuum, which is the minimum at the origin. This allows for out of equilibrium interactions, and the model extension can possibly improve on baryon genesis compared to the pure standard model theory. As the temperature gets colder, the barrier decreases and eventually disappears, and the Higgs field drops into the true minimum. At this point, we have the symmetry breaking just like in the standard model. The details then depend on the exact parameters of the theory. So we have a model that can produce a first order phase transition, but how does it help us actually understanding if the theory is even correct? It's easy to come up with a solution on paper, but if it doesn't work in the physical world, it's useless. While we can of course get evidence for the model by direct detection, as mentioned in a previous video, there is also another cool thing about having a first order phase transition. When this phase transition takes place, we get like Higgs bubbles. At some point, the Higgs field manages to transition to the true vacuum, which is the minimum away from the origin. But the Higgs field spans all of space-time, it might only transition locally. In this case, you get like a Higgs bubble, where inside the bubble the transition has taken place, and thus symmetry breaking has occurred and things are massive, but outside the bubble the Higgs field has not transitioned yet. These massive bubbles then grow and collide and eventually the entire Higgs field has transitioned into the true vacuum. It's a bit like boiling water. If you take some water and boil it, then you see that inside this liquid water, gaseous water or steam forms. Now because of gravity, these lighter steam bubbles go to the surface and the steam escapes. So there's not these bubble collisions like in the Higgs bubbles. But the boiling water is also a phase transition of water from a liquid to a gas. You only turn some of the water into steam from the bubbles. The whole pot of water doesn't just turn into steam immediately. This is a bit like the first order electric phase transition, where we just have massive Higgs bubbles in space-time, where some of the field is still massless until the transition is complete. This concept of Higgs bubble nucleation is maybe a bit hard to grasp, and the more interesting question is maybe, what can we use it for? It turns out that these Higgs bubbles have a lot of mass and energy, and as we know from general relativity, that means they can affect space-time itself. And these bubbles can actually be so significant 
that it can produce a relatively large gravitational wave signal. This means that the electric phase transition might have produced a gravitational wave signal background. A bit like the cosmic microwave background, or CB. But recall that CB was formed when the universe was around 380,000 years old. While the CMB has taught us many valuable things about the early universe, it is limited in the sense that it was formed a long time after the Big Bang. A gravitational wave signal straight from the electric phase transition could tell us something deep about the conditions during the early part of the Big Bang. And of course, if this signal matches the signal predicted by the models we have discussed, then we can use it as evidence. But while the signal might be quite strong, it is not strong enough to be measured with current technologies. This is however not the end of the world, because technologies keep improving, and within the foreseeable future, a new space interferometer will be launched to measure gravitational waves much more sensitively. This is called the LISA experiment, and it could possibly detect signals produced by the physics of this theory we have discussed. But only time will tell. And as it looks now, the constraints from the direct detection would likely put the theory to the test before we can look at these gravitational wave signals. The early universe is a complicated story where there is still more to be learned. I hope you have a better idea of the electric phase transition and understand that the standard model struggles with baryogenesis, but with new extensions of the model, the situation can be improved. Gravitational wave signals might be able to tell us more secrets about the universe in the future, so there is more work to do and many things to learn. On that note, we will finish the discussion of my master's thesis. If you have any topics you would like to see covered, let me know in the comment sections, together with any other feedback. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel if you want more such content, as it helps to promote the videos. Other than that, I hope you learned something from this series and that you found it interesting. Stay tuned for more to come.